Hi, welcome to another video of Ben African Cichlids. So you heard about poto plants and uh, you're wondering how to set it up so it removes some nitrates out of your tank and stretch the amount of time in between the uh, water change that you have to do for your maintenance. Well, I'll show you how to cut it and how to get it started and what to put it in so that you're successful with this. Poto plants is a, a vine and uh, it likes to grow and get longer and longer and then they'll all, it's always in search of water. Uh, this is a plant that lots of aquarius love to use because it absorbs lots of nitrates out of the tanks and uh, so suck all the nutriment, nutrient out of the water and actually slow down your algae grow in the same time because it removes so much nutrient sometimes you might even have trouble to grow some aquarium plants so <clears throat> those those vine here if you can see there's all those little those are called nuds here and those nuds, they're all, pla uh, they're all places where the plant actually, it's full of it, like close to all the leaf, and there's a little pointy spot here. And uh, they're all over the place. And this is always in search of water, because this is where the plant will actually grow some roots. And uh, those plants like to climb too. So actually, you have to be careful because I had a few times that it started to attach itself to the painting on the walls and start climbing up the wall. Uh, so I always have to control it so that it twists it away from the painting. That there's a loop in there. But anyway, the plant comes from the basket here, a window planter, and then it comes in this way and then it tur I turn it around the other to go the other way and then uh, now it uh, it actually went into the water here and grew some roots underneath the lid so I don't know if you guys will be able to see that there but at the top in the corner over there it's actually full of fruits and there's some there's some that goes almost to the middle here let me see if i can bring a light closer and uh, maybe i'll be able to see this better yeah all the roots over there they're all from the poto plants so not only the not only the vine itself travel but the roots will travel too after it started to detect some water and moisture It'll go right into your water. So, the way to get it started, it's, well, if you get the plant from the store and it's in a pot of dirt, then you have to go underneath the sink, like, well, put most of the dirt into the garbage or your garden or something like that, uh, and try to remove all of the dirt that there is on the roots by just rinsing them as best as you can under your sink. Uh, you don't want none of this dirt to go in your aquarium because less of the time it will have pesticide and it will have like uh, some uh, fertilizer mixed with it that might not be good to go in your water or that might be dangerous for your fish. So you want to rinse it all out to make sure everything's good. This basket here, uh, you guys can see, I'll post the video at the top here, but you can see when I first started it, I think I bought like three or three or four little plants there at the store. And then I just washed them. And then, so you can see that the basket just had a couple plants at the beginning, a couple of leaf pointing out. And then I put some grow lights in there. And then uh, with that, uh, it's, you don't really need to grow lights because that's a plant that don't need too much light anyway. Uh, I was just trying to speed up the growth. Uh, it took a little while, but now like it's really like a stable plant. Actually, sometime it'll grow like right. I can grab a piece and go right across the room, which is about uh, I think it's twelve feet long, twelve feet wide. This room and uh, reach the patio door. I think I even went outside one time. So we talk about uh, 
what to do if you buy it and pot and want to reuse those roots and stuff. But you can also just get a cutting from somebody that already have some. And I'll show you how to do the cutting and then you can stir the roots with just having the nodes in the water. So to do the cutting, you'll, you'll find the end of one of the vine. And then uh, you just decide how long you want your cutting to be. And then you want to make sure that you have, like, you cut about, like, maybe an inch from the last note that you're going to want to keep. Now, when you put this in the water, the little piece that you cut is going to rot a little bit. And then uh, after that, the plant. But it'll be enough time for the plant to be able to start feeding out of your water column. And then the plant uh, will have started some roots. And then uh, as it ruts more, the roots will develop more here. And then you can just remove the rutted part after. Uh, sometimes it doesn't even rot too. So yeah, so cut about an inch from, from the biggest node there. So those little little bits here, they'll also they also grow some roots, but this is the one that is important, the big ones there. You do an inch here. So now that we cut one inch from the node, uh, we cut it in at a 45 degree angle. Uh, this is how you start most plants, and if you ever kept flower, that's what you have to do too. And uh, it gives it more space for the plant to be able to feed out of your water column. Now the plant will grow faster if it actually is in contact with the air, but it will survive also if you just pluck it into your tank and just let it float in there. It'll still survive, it won't rot or nothing like that. It'll just keep feeding in there and it'll grow, but it'll grow slow. So what you want to do is if you want it to grow fast, if you have fish that won't bother plants, then you can just tie it up with the elastic or squeeze it into the side of your lid at the back or on the side, whatever. Like, you know, just put it like this, like where you have your intake or I'll take for your filter, put it in the water and then, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, yeah. So you put it in the water and then it'll just create some roots on its own after a while. As long as the node is touching the water, you're fine develop some roots now if you have fish like me with the african cichlids they'll just rip those things to shred so i want to protect this um, so this is why here i got the window planter i'll switch you around so i have the window planter and what i did it's i just filled it up with uh, um, lava rocks and that's just to add some media to the tank there. Um, so, and then I grow some holes in the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see that there. Maybe the other video would be better for this, because uh, this is already set up. But uh, So I drill some hole into the window planter, just, uh, just underneath the lid, but above the water level. And then uh, I have my return for my canister filter. Uh, it's over there, here, yeah. That's the return for the canister filter that goes right into the planter. And then, uh, so nice, clean, fresh water that's already filtered goes in there so it doesn't get all the lava rock too dirty and plugged up. And then it gives more media for bacteria to grow. And then, uh, because all the plants are into the planter, then uh, the fish don't have access to any of the roots. Now I won't, wouldn't be able to really remove any of this easily because the roots are all over the place in there. But the roots do not come at the uh, come out of the window planter itself. At the bottom of the window planter, there's actually a hole too, a small hole. So uh, yeah, the water can flow out of there too and then uh, the overflow of it just goes towards the back of the window planter to all the holes that I drill. So I drill probably like, you know, every notch here, like this, I drill a hole in it. So <clears throat> like that, it cannot overflow on me. 
and then make a mess all over the place. So on a 75 gallon or 50 gallon tank or a 90 gallon tank, uh, the window planter actually fit perfect into one section. So that's a 24 inch window planter and it fits perfect in between the crossbar here of the tank and the other side here. Uh, if you have a 75 or 90 gallon, which is 18 inch deep, then you can just remove one section and then it fits perfect in between the other section with the glass on and then to the window planter. Now this fit nice and snug in here. You actually have to push the window planter a little bit to open this lid, but it doesn't make too much pressure. See, there's no cracks at all anywhere on here. So, and uh, because the water's free to flow out of there at good time, and it doesn't actually go higher than the water level of the tank, then, uh, you know, there's no weight of water in there trying to pull anything down. And that's why I also use the lava rock because the lava rock are super light, right? And then the rest of it, they should just plant. So because of that, you can, uh, you can manage to do this little trick. But if it's not something that you want to do because it takes too much space or something like that, or, you know, you want something that's a little bit smaller, then uh, here's another trick. So you can just grab yourself a water bottle or whatever plastic bottle you can get. And then uh, for this here, I would remove this last branch here. I just break this off. It's very easy to break off. So you just, you just pull on it and then it'll break. And it usually breaks like fairly flush there. It doesn't really hurt the plant itself and then uh, now you would be able to put this right into your bottle and then you can attach the bottle on the side of your tank and then uh, I would just drill some holes in there and then uh, what you need to do there's lots of people complaining about the plant rotting uh, usually and what it is it's because there's not enough you need to, you need, if you do any aquaponic stuff, you need to have lots of water movement and air aeration so that uh, the plant don't rot. So <clears throat> what I would do here, it's drill some holes in here and then I would just stick like a tube with a hair stone in there and just let that bubble over. If you want to make this to a little filter, you can also like put a little bit of lava rock in there and then you can even like wrap it with a sponge if you want. And then you have like, you know, all your filtration and your media in there and stuff like that. And then just tie it up with a, a elastic or something or a coat hanger at the top here and then you can just hang it into the water on the side of your tank right so that's a little trick there but yeah the most important thing is like for people that are not successful is aeration water flow lots of water flow so another thing that people might do sometime too is actually stick that into a filter so if you have like a tank like this with a hang on the back filter at the back, then uh, you can just pop the lid. Let me try to move this light out of the way. You can just pop the lid off. And then uh, stick your photo plants right in here. And that will give it lots of flow so that it can grow. Just make it come out of the front here, get it stuck somehow in here, and you can put your put your lid back on, and that will grow like this. Or you can just, uh, you know, if you don't mind drilling a little hole at the top of your lid, or just use a little, uh, I don't know, shoebox lid and stuff from uh, those those plastic shoebox, and then you can drill holes in there and use that as a lid in here. Uh, the only thing why I don't like to do it that way, and there's lots of people that do it that way, but the reason why I don't usually do it that way is just because the roots will get all over the place and uh, 
you know, I don't want it to get stuck into the proper or something like that of the filter or the other thing that you will do too, I had that, I tried it before and it, if you have a sponge in there, the roots will go in and out of the sponge all over the place. So, so the only way to remove the sponge or to clean it is to actually rip all the roots right out of your plant. So then, then you start over, right? So I don't usually stick it in there, but um, so for if you're breeding African cichlids though, uh, the babies are too small to do any damage to that. So you can just throw that in the tank. I think I get the, I got a piece of the back there. So uh, yeah, you can just stick that in there and then they'll be fine. So yeah, so at the end of the day, I, I think that I suggest to everybody that don't have a planted tank to uh, actually like if you have lots of fake plants and you're trying to control your level in your plant, uh, you know, nitrate, nitrate, ammonia, stick that in there. It's going to absorb lots of it because uh, plants will absorb ammonia and nitrates too. So, you know, of course, if you're trying to cycle and maybe wait until you're done cycling your tank and then just put that to help to control everything. It's better if it just end up sucking up the nitrates, right? So, but yeah, so hopefully you're successful with those little tips and tricks there. And uh, if you have any question, then uh, shoot me a comment below. I'll be happy to answer you. Okay, so see you in the next video.